Good afternoon and welcome to Build. I'm Laura Haywood. It's a gorgeous day in New York City and we're going to have a really fun time this afternoon. My guest is Stephen Amell. I'm sure you know he's the star of Arrow on the CW. What you might not know is that he's an entrepreneur and a major wine lover and he has his own wine club called Knocking Point. So today we'll talk about Arrow, of course, and then we'll be joined by his partner, Andrew, to drink some wine together. That is my kind of afternoon. While I get my corkscrew out, let's take a look at a clip of Stephen in action on Arrow. Mr. Oliver? Oh, thank God you are all right. Thank you for coming so quickly. I was close. Where are the men? All right, tie them up. They're unconscious. Hey, I just spoke to Renee, Dinah, and John. They're okay. Good. Hey, what about Curtis? He's okay. His boyfriend isn't. He has to go into surgery. Sterling Channel's not secure. No, no. Lila sent them to the Argus Med Bay. They're going to be okay. Quentin. Quentin said that Diaz isn't going to attack the mayor. It's too much in the public eye. The laurel's in the wind. What about us? That's why I called Reza. Okay, we're going to put you into Argus custody. They're going to keep you safe. You're not coming, are you? No. I have to stay here. I have to finish this. You're going to go with Reza and Felicity. Well, actually, buddy, I'm not coming either. I would like you far away from here and safe. Oliver, this is my fight as much as it is yours. I'm not going anywhere. As the Green Arrow, I have gone up against some terrible people who have tried to do terrible things. Hey, look at me. And I'm still here. That doesn't mean you always will be. You're right. William, I just started being your dad, okay? I love being your dad. And nothing is gonna take me away from you, especially not Ricardo Diaz. Arrow, all new tonight at 9, 8 central on The CW. What a badass! Okay. <laughs> Looking at Oliver Queen on screen, do you recognize yourself or does he feel like a different person? It feels more like me than I would care to admit. Really? <laughs> yeah. What, what is it about him that you feel like deep down you have in common with him the most? Well, not murder. <laughs> but in general, you know, I, I've lived with this guy mm -hmm. for six years. And every once in a while, I don't always read fan commentary, uh, but every once in a while, I will read something where someone will see something in an episode and they'll just be like, yeah, that wasn't Oliver, that was Steven. Oh, yeah? And they're totally right. Really? Everyone's, there was an episode this year where when, when, uh, when Felicity and Oliver get married, mm -hmm. where Emily smushes cake all over my face, that was not Felicity and Oliver. <laughs> that was Emily and Steven. You know, that, that, was, that was really like, that, did you say that? You're reacting like it was you that made that comment. No, no, it's fine. Okay, okay, okay. We no, have no, a but, very but, but excited everyone, audience. As, as the years have gone by, uh, more of me has creeped into him, just in terms of the portrayal. That's for sure. So there's more Stephen in Oliver. Is there any more Oliver in Stephen? And I'm not talking about murder. Probably. But not with, like, vigilante justice or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just more... Um, Oliver is a very particular person. He's not very patient. And through the years, as I've become busier, um, I'm a little bit more particular now. Mm -hmm. My wife and I have a mantra, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but every once in a while, I'll say something to her, and she'll look at me, and she'll go, what do we say? And I'll be like, we're not on set. You're bringing your set behaviors home with you. No, it's it, it just I spend the majority of my life on set. Uh -huh. um, the example that I would always use is, so imagine that you and I go out to dinner. Okay? Uh, I can imagine that. All right. So we go out to dinner tomorrow night. And okay, I, and I, done. Okay, right. Okay. What time? No. Uh, <laughs> and I, and I, I pay for it, right? And then we go out again the mm -hmm. following night, and I pay for it. Mm-hmm. And we do this for a month straight. I, then, I really like this. It's good, guys. right? Yeah. And on the last day of the month, I say, you know what? Instead of me picking it all up, let's split it. 
Mm -hmm. It's a perfectly reasonable request. But there would be just a little tiny bit of you that would be like, well, why now? Why is this happening now? You're supposed to pay for this, right? And that's what happens to me being on set all the time where when I walk down a hallway and a crew member is coming the other way, carrying something heavy, like a 14 foot wide hallway, they'll stop and put their back against the wall and wait for me to pass. You're used to being the star. I don't ask them to do this, but when, but when you're around that behavior so much, you end up being a little oddly conditioned. Mm -hmm. So thus we have a mantra, <laughs> we're not on set. You're the one who needs to step out of the way, everyone. That's so right. Much. I do all the time. I need to step out of the way all the time. So I'm very excited to get to talking about your wine. But before we do that, sure. I just want to talk about um, one of your co-stars who um, who I know from the Broadway world. Yes. Um, Colin Donnell has made a return this season. Yeah. I don't know how many times he can die and still be alive on this series. but At I am, least a couple I more. I am into it. Um, and that brings me to the idea that like, so I found this, in, this uh, social media video of you serenading somebody recently with Sweet Caroline. And and I'm like, oh, oh, Stephen Amell has a voice. Well, her name is, uh, I have a better voice than it sounds like right now. I'll tell you that much. No, her, th uh, this woman's name is Caroline. Mm -hmm. And she's a uh, bartender at Churchill Downs where we go every year for the Kentucky Derby. So my question is, are you and Colin and maybe Colin's wife, Patty Murin, who's a Broadway star, yeah. going to collaborate on anything musical at any point, please? Why do I always get these musical questions? <laughs> it's my fault, isn't it? Well, I could stop posting videos on social media of me <laughs> singing and I would probably avoid these questions. That sounds I? like a non-answer. My love of singing is equaled only by my abject hatred of the idea of having a musical episode of Arrow. But mm. I, I, I could see us collaborating. The only problem is that I'm a karaoke singer. Mm -hmm. They're professional singers. True. A guy um, sang next to John Barrowman once, who's obviously been on stage a mm -hmm. bunch. And I obviously I've, I've, I've sang next to Colin as well. Like, I'm just closing my eyes and singing as hard as I can. They're using, like, the proper methods. Like a sing. lifetime of, of Yeah, training. like a lifetime of actual <laughs> coaching. If I sing one song, or like, for example, basically from serenading Caroline at the Kentucky Derby, I still have no voice. Really? Right? So if I was on Broadway, it would be great, except I'd perform one show, <laughs> and then I wouldn't be able to perform again until the following Friday. I heard a rumor that you're known for your Hamilton rapping. Uh, my, 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 daughter has, my daughter has made me learn Hamilton, yes. Oh, it's, oh. It's, we have a request from oh, the audience okay. that you give us a demonstration. I, 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 I do this for my daughter, so we sing the whole song, and I, I won't sing all of it, but I say... Um, <clears throat> There would have been nothing left to do for someone less astute. He would have been dead or destitute without a sense of restitution. Started working, clerking for his late mother's landlord, paying sugar cane and rum and all the things he can't afford, scamming for every book he can get his hand on, planning for the future. See him now as he stands on the bow of a ship, waiting for a new land. In New York, York you, you can, can be a new, new man. man. His ship is in the harbor now. See if you can spot him. Another immigrant coming up from the bottom. America. Da, 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 da. We fought, fought for, for him. him. Me, I died for him. Me, I loved him. I'm messing this up. I'm sorry, Lynn. And me, I'm the, I'm the damn, damn fool who shot him. him. And there's a million things you haven't done. But just you wait. And what's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> And the next number, just kidding. That was amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. Was it? Yes. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I love it, that song. You, lo you look a little shaken. Why don't we bring Andrew out and we'll all have a glass of wine together? <laughs> Help me relax a little <laughs> exactly. bit. Exactly. Rapping gives me anxiety. <laughs> Welcome, Andrew, guys. Welcome, Andrew. And look at all of this beautiful wine you brought for us. We're going to drink all six of these bottles for, um, in the next 15 minutes. Um, Andrew, tell us hey. a little bit about you. Born and raised in Walla Walla, Washington, mm -hmm. which is why the winery is there, of course. Um, moved to L.A. in the late 90s. There were 20 or 25 wineries in Walla Walla. Now there's almost 200. And uh, I came to L.A. and worked for MTV for six or seven years. Met my wife there. Um, met Stephen through my wife. It's part of the whole Canadian coalition that I'm <laughs> part of now. Really. <laughs> and... Uh, 
Stephen and I um, met what in '09? Is that right? '08? '08 yeah. '09? Yeah, we go way Thank back. Thank you. Yeah, through the wife. And um, so I, I left MTV in 2012. Went to start a, a, a music technology company called Source Audio, which kind of freed me up a little bit to do some some more uh, entrepreneurial stuff. Stephen and I both love wine. And um, we can probably tell the story here in a second about how we went to wine country and fell in love with the whole thing and uh, started Knocking Point in 2000. Sold our first bottle of wine in 2013. Don't, don't be weird. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what are we drinking right weird. now? Cheers. This cheers. is year five. This was, so we started with year one. This is a... Mm. It's delicious, right? This is right? a red blend. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Justin Wiley. Made this one, Justin will like that. Um, but uh, share, man, feel free. Well, so it's a, I'm it's still, sh I'm still shaking from having to from rap. The rap. Oh, you are. <laughs> I, I, I literally am okay, super well, nervous right but, now. But he nailed it, by the way, well, for know, the record. I, I'm standing there backstage watching it on the screen. You, you went word for word perfectly. I can't wait to <laughs> send it to Lynn. He's gonna love it. Oh God. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> he watches all the build interviews. Is that true? Yeah. I'll tell you, I was listening to the Hamilton mixtape on the way down to Palm Springs a couple of years ago, and I tweeted about how I thought it was amazing. I'm fully sweating. <laughs> I More about why? How I thought it was he amazing. is a little and shiny. He, from and, the he side, followed, yeah. and he followed me on Twitter. Uh huh. I don't hesitate to bring that up when I want to feel cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till he retweets you sometime. That's a real rush. All right, get, let's get back to the why. Okay. All right. Um, so we've got. There, there's a there. Uh, the labels are beautiful. I know one of them was uh, designed by one of your daughters. One of them yes. that was a, is original artwork by Jason Momoa. Yes. There's a picture of our friend Zachary right there on the sure. on the. Is that a rose? It yes. is. Um, Looking very handsome. Very handsome. Yeah. In fact, you guys have collaborated with a lot of very handsome men. That's right. <laughs> I feel like this don't, could be just called like hot guy wines. Don't don't read too much into it. <laughs> I mean, and also Emily, right? Oh. You know, hot guys, and then yeah, and, and Emily, Emily. Might be the most handsome person yeah. that we have collaborated with. Yeah. And is your ne your next collaborator is a woman coming up too? It is. Uh, and you she haven't is. have she you is. announced who it is? No. Do you want to go ahead and say it? Yeah. Yeah. Give us a scoop. Sure. It's it's Aisha Tyler. Yes. Yeah. That's excellent. So the way coming out with boss bitch wine. That's not something it. No, like I'm that. Kidding. Uh, that would be amazing. I, I think I may have just came up with the name of her wine for her. Would that, <laughs> it's would not that even be, up to her. Would that be, yeah. would that be allowed? <laughs> no, she can name it whatever she wants. What, no, we're what very, is Jason's very excited wine too. called? Jason Momoa's dirt bag. wine. Yeah, right. So if dirt he bag. can be dirt bag wine, she can be boss bitch wine. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so so it's done subscription style. Andrew, do you want to tell us like how people um, sign up for the club and what they get? Yeah, knockingpointwines.com. So uh, Stephen and I started the club about three and a half years ago because mainly um, Stephen sold us out of all the wine we had super fast, right? So it's like, how do, how, do we, how do we find out who wants the wine beyond having the wine to be able to fulfill these orders, right? So, so it's like we had, you know, X wine. It, it sold, you know, super fast. We had so many people emailing in going, how do I get it? How do I get it? How do I get it? So we shifted to a wait list and a wine club, and now we know how much to make, how many members we have, how big the wait list is, and um, I don't know, this guy can sell wine fast, so, you know. Uh, what do you think it is about you that allows you to sell wine? Is it that you have a fan base that will buy anything you put your name on? Is it that... that no, I don't, you know, no. I don't, when I, Drew was there, has been there since the beginning, and, you know, I've tried to, specifically through Facebook mostly, I've tried to build a build a following in a very organic way. I, I run my own Facebook page. It's never been run by anyone else. We have our buddy Zacco, who works with us for Knocking Point, who will occasionally post Knocking Point related things on my behalf. Mm -hmm. But it started out before there was Facebook Live, I would just, I would just uh, take questions and do a Q&A, &A, just chat with people. Mm -hmm. And then when Live started, um, I would do the same thing. You know, we had, the, we had fun things like Meme Mondays and Fan Art Fridays that I've seen a bunch of people rip off, by the way. Oh. I just want, that's fine. I'm not bitter about it at all. <laughs> um, but uh, I just think that when I, when I put my name behind something and when I, when, I, when I get into something, I think that people, uh, I've built up some equity with, with, uh, with people, which I, I don't know why. Well, I think it helps that you're putting out really quality products. 
Well, that is an thank important. You. Yeah. Thank you. That that's an important part of it. We knew that if we were going to make 125 cases when we started, that people were just going to buy it. Probably. Mm -hmm. I, I was I was very confident. But we also knew that if we made gasoline, nobody was going to get it again. Right. So we knew that it had to be high quality. One of the one of the things that I'm most proud of with Knocking Point is um, the price point of the wine club. We think that for what you get for the amount of money that you spend, we think that it's an incredible value. And um, yeah. So it's it's quarterly. It's and quarterly. It's about a hundred bucks. You get three bottles of wine, some coffee, yep, um, and some goodies, some knocking point some apparel, knocking point goodies, socks. Um, little speaking yeah, we of do socks, a comic book every year with DC I, Comics as I just, well. Speaking of socks, since we were talking about Lin Manuel Miranda, I just yep. have to acknowledge your Moana socks. Oh yeah, a fan gave me these this weekend in Nashville. So, Very cute. <laughs> Lynn, if you're watching this, we're two for two now. I love Hamilton, and I'm wearing <laughs> Moana socks. Okay, <laughs> I'm saying this directly into camera. All right. I wonder whether we could get you like get you some voice lessons and put you up for the role of King George. Oh, I can sing that song. Not right now. I don't believe right you. Now, You're going to have to. No, but I can. I can. On no, your can. next Facebook Live, somebody on his next Facebook Live. I've heard him, him sing, sing it multiple times. Oh, there's video of yeah. me singing it again with, with no voice, but there's, there's video of me singing it with John Barrowman this weekend in Nashville. It happened. Oh, some people have seen it. Oh, my gosh. What she said. You guys aren't drinking your wine. Sorry. Cheers. I'm, 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 I'm just going to peer pressure you. I was you brought it. I was worried that I was going to spill it because my hands were all shaky. Aw, that's kind of adorable. Does Oliver Queen drink wine? Uh, he does, but only by himself, staring into the vacuous space. <laughs> if he had, if Oliver had his own wine, what would he name it? And Morose what? Cabernet. <laughs> <laughs> he, it would be a Cabernet. That's right. All right. No, it'd probably be a Malbec. That's right. Yeah. Amel Beck. We have one of our wines is called Amel Beck, and yeah, now I don't know, Amel Beck. and now I don't know how to say Malbec anymore. <laughs> I just I just say Amel Beck. <laughs> People assume they know what I'm talking about, so we go from there. Can you go down the line of these bottles and just give us a little information about each? May I, one? Drew? Please, please go for so, it. So that is uh, Emily Bet Ricard's Pacific Coast Pink. That is a sparkling rosé. That's the one um, I'm most excited about. That is our most popular wine, and that is a bit of a problem for my ego, but Emily is <laughs> more popular than I am, and it's really, really good. We did a podcast the other day, and we're supposed to try a bunch of our, our different wines, and the girl, Emma, who was co-hosting the podcast, just stopped trying all the other wines and just started pouring that for herself. She just held the bottle to herself and just kept failing and failing. This is Dirtbag, which is a Cab Sauve Cab Franc blend that Jason Momoa did that when you get it in the wine club is going to come in a brown paper bag. <laughs> you, so that doesn't have dirt in it, does it? We did everything that we could to uh, comply with everything, there he Jason, is. Look at Jason. with everything Jason wanted. So it's like, he wanted to be in a round paper bag? Fine. <laughs> he wanted to be called Dirtbag? Fine. And then he was like, I want every cap to be wax dipped and have a yes, bit of human did. blood in it. We're no, like, he can't, man. He, like, he said, we can't. We he can't. Said, make sure actually, you dip. Not, I only made one part of that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The wax. Well, he said, make sure you dip every bottle in in uh, blood red wax. And I went, okay, we can do like twenty cases. I mean, seven thousand bottles would take literally weeks. Yeah. Of just dipping and dipping and dipping. So I'll skip over to Zach Levi's rosé. Uh, this was the rosé that we did for Nerd HQ last year. And then this is First Responder Red, oh, I love which that is label. instead of instead of doing a collaboration uh, this past March, March first, <laughs> March, March first, yeah, uh, we decided to uh, do a wine where we would pair up with a couple of charities because of all the wildfires that happened in California. So we paired up with two different charities, and a portion of the proceeds that we um, generated through our wine club with this wine uh, went to benefit first responders and their families, both in California and across the United States. Will you show us the label of the one we're drinking right now, too? Yes, this is year five. So this is a bunch of different labels that we've had through Knocking Point. And again, we called it year one with the idea that eventually we'd get to year whatever. whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then I'll let Drew take the one in the center right here. Yeah, so every year, Stephen and I have a white wine that our daughters get to art direct. My daughter's three and a half, and... Mavi is four and a half, and um, this one's called KDH for uh, Kennedy Drew Harding. Um, it's a Sauv Blanc by Sean Boyd, our buddy. And uh, when we asked Kennedy this year what she wanted, she said, I wanted a, a uh, unicorn, a princess castle, and a duck. 
and so I mean, there it, it looks is. like something it's I would design. Kind of, right? <laughs> right? Can you, have, can you, says, can you imagine handing that off to an artist, though? Hey, we need you to make a wine label. What needs to be on it? <laughs> <laughs> a unicorn, a princess castle, and a duck. Yeah. That was, who did this? This was Danny Haas. Danny, Danny Haas. Haas. And she couldn't yeah. be more proud either, right? We have friends come over to the house, and this little three year old girl comes running out holding this. It's my wine, right? <laughs> <laughs> like running up to people. Actually, uh, <laughs> it's like, oh boy, put that so, Our friends so go. So did she that, taste that, it and, uh, and decide? She has on never, the... never come That's a problem. These wines, again, like a, right? a white no. wine doesn't. You wanted to be on the record with that, did you? Yeah, I am on the record. She is not. The white wines won't age. Like, you can't keep it around. No, no, she's not. She's never really going to. She's never really going to enjoy that. No. But you said every year they'll you'll every continue year. to let the Yeah, my daughter this year did a sloth in a palm tree in the desert. I mean, I love it. <laughs> I want to buy cases Makes of no that sense, unicorn right? wine based on the label alone. That's it. I'd bring those to every every person every housewarming I go to, every That's why we do party. it. That's you know, why we do it. We're all listening. We're long knocking point is around and I think it's going to be around for a long time. It has made Christmas and birthdays way easier. <laughs> I bet. Because we just oh, yeah. give it to people. That's it. Drew, I need a case of wine. Sent where? Sent here. Okay, it's done. Amazing. Like where did the name knocking point come from? Go ahead. It's where you knock an arrow on the bow. Ah, so it's a it's a, a green arrow. Reference. Not to our officially without calling. No, it. not officially. Yeah. Officially, no, it is not. No mosh. Yeah. <laughs> no mosh. <laughs> we always try to. We always try to. We always try to. You know, uh, sort of skirt the idea that, of course, I'm on Arrow, and of course, people, um, you know, they recognize me from that. But like, for example, one of our labels, Wicked Aim, we wanted to have the, um, you know, the silhouette of someone that looks suspiciously like Oliver Queen dressed in the <laughs> Arrow suit. And they'll do it, and I'll be like, well, take out the mask. Take out the mask, mm -hmm. just so it could conceivably be a guy in a hood, if it needed to be. <laughs> I heard that you did some substantial bow and arrow training for this part, because you didn't want to look like people, other people on TV who have faked being good with archery. No, my archery coach didn't want me to look like people who have been on yeah. TV and have faked being good at okay, archery. Okay, fair enough. The biggest thing is that is that sometimes people are not don't they don't even have a string on their bow, and uh, <laughs> oftentimes uh, they because they're not actually shooting anything because they want to add some sort of flourish to it because an arrow is not firing off. They they whip their hand back like mm -hmm. that. That's the telltale sign. Cool. Yeah. How good are you with an arrow right now? I'm really, really, really fake good. <laughs> He's actually really, really practicing good, too. I've seen him do it. We went to Martin Archery, which is based in Walla Walla, and this guy was, like, dead on a bunch That's over awesome. and over and over again. Yeah, we, we did a, we did it was, a, a little, like, a little target practice, and I think the first thing was, like, a, you know, like a bale of hay, whatever, and then the second thing was some type of stuffed animal. And I didn't like a little pig or something. Oh weird, no! But, don't no. don't was, shoot that was, little yeah. animal. Yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> of course. Right in and the not, face. And not only right did I hit face. it, but I hit it right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> did you Instagram that moment? I yes, I, I did. I kind of want to see. No, no, it, it exists. It exists somewhere online. Oh, I'm gonna get deep, deep, even deeper into the googling. 2014 Martin Archery, something like that, right? Uh, so we're almost out of time, so we better start drinking the rest of those bottles. Yeah. Right. No, I'm just kidding. We'll finish up this one. Um, but let's take a couple questions from the audience. We're going to start right here. Oh, Daniel, I heard it's your birthday. Yeah. Is that true? So, yeah. Um, okay. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, bud. I was uh, wondering if you could wish me a happy birthday. Well, very happy birthday. How old are you turning? 11. 11? Yeah, my birthday was actually May 10th. Oh, May 10th. You know that I'm May 8th. You know that I'm May 8th, right? Happy birthday. Thank you. I heard that I, I saw that you were getting a lot of cake on recent interviews, so I decided not to bring you any, but it wasn't because I didn't know you just had a birthday. Too, mu too much. <laughs> too much cake. You should have seen some what, of the um, cakes too there. What uh, what did you do for your birthday? Um, I didn't really do anything, but she was nice enough and she let me know that you were going to be here. So I was like, "Can you please take me?" And she's like, "Sure." Well, that's cool, man. You're the birthday present. Well, hang on. Well, let's. We'll make sure that you stick around after the show. And we'll get a nice picture together for your birthday, okay? All right, man. Thanks for spending stop. your let's birthday with us. Thanks, man. Who else has a, a question? Hi. Hi. Um, this, this question is actually from my sister, um, who's watching because she loves you. Um, but she wants to know if uh, they ever did like a Marvel DC um, crossover type thing, if you'd want to pair up with um, Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye. 
both badass archers is what she said. Sure. <laughs> I mean, we have a, um, our, our buddy Sal is, is good, buddies, good buddies with Renner. And uh, we chatted all the time. I met him once in L.A. Super nice guy. Really good actor. I don't know why people think we're rivals. Um, I'm, well, I mean, I'm clearly superior to him just well. based on the fact that I'm right-handed. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'd love to team up with him. Love working with him. A huge fan of his. Huge fan of his work. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Hey. Um, first, I just want to thank you so much for your show. I watch it with my son, and we have such a great time watching it together. Cool. So my question is, one of the many things I like about your show is the dialogue and the lines that the writers give a lot of funny lines, and also they give like a lot of inside jokes, I think, with the audience. Yeah. So my question is, do you have a favorite dialogue or favorite line, or have you ever gotten a script and said, oh, I can't wait to say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I got to give Barry Allen his name in the Flash pilot, I said that dialogue, and or w the first time that I read it, pardon me, and I just got just goosebumps up and down. Like I, like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, I get to name the Flash? Oh, let's get into this one. So, and then I get to deliver a line of dialogue in the finale tomorrow night at 9, 8 central on the CW, uh, where I get to say it directly into camera. Rarely happens. Throws me off as an actor because we're taught not to look into the camera. Uh, but it's, it's really fun. Yeah, thank you. Wait, you break the fourth wall in the season finale? I mean, I guess, you know, I guess the fourth wall I'm is... I'm talking to a... Oh, I'm going to mess everything up, aren't I? No, I'm, I'm talking to a news camera. So I, I stare okay. into the camera, which uh -huh. we know to be a camera. And we tried it a bunch of different ways. And typically, like I, this happened a couple of times on the show before where they've had me say a line of dialogue into the camera. And normally it gets changed so that I'm looking slightly off. Mm -hmm. Not this time. Cool. They kept it. I also heard that you got a rundown of what season seven's going to look like. Yep. Um, how many more bottles of wine do you need to drink before you tell us everything? <laughs> Not a ton. <laughs> no, I'm going to do you a favor no, and not I'm, ask too many probing questions. You know, we have, a new, we have a new showrunner in Beth Schwartz, and we have about three or four holdovers for, in the writer's room, but we also have four or five new people, all of whom are fans of the show, mm. which I think is really, really cool and indicative of a show that's been on the air for seven years. Or, or, well, six full years and going into year seven. Uh -huh. uh, but hearing what they have planned and how specific they were about it uh, was, was very exciting. And the thing that I really want to do with the show, um, being where we are, is I don't want to assume that... I don't want to assume that we're just going to exist in, in, in perpetuity. I don't want to assume there's going to be a season eight. I want to... If Lynn's listening, I want to write like we're running out of time. Yes. Okay? Which I really, really, I, I mean, I, I actually say that. I'm, I'm not doing that for the benefit of, of Lynn. If, if you're watching, <laughs> I'm glad you're still watching. You're getting um, good at looking right in the camera. But, uh, but no, I, I want to write like we're running out of time. Uh -huh. Because we are not guaranteed a season eight. Period. Right? Nobody is. Not everybody is supernatural. Not everybody, ex <laughs> <laughs> not everybody exists forever. So I would really hope that if we've got a good story, if they have something that they want to do, do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like a musical episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Let's take another question from the audience. Please and thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm wondering if there might be any chance of a three-way Knocking Point collaboration with Grant and Melissa. Oh, wouldn't that be a good idea? Yes. I mean... Grant and Melissa, if you're watching, we would love to, no, I'd love to do that. I've pitched Greg a couple of times on, uh, about, um, you know, just setting up a wine that exists across the Arrowverse. I thought that would be very cool. Um, Agreed. Agreed. Roswell, which is a new show on the CW that my friend is, is show running, mm -hmm. they thought that they were going to get picked up on Thursday. And they all went to a bar to celebrate. And... They got picked up, but they didn't get the notice until Friday. And our new label of Apex Rosé 
Tell is, me it's called Rosé Well. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that idea. You're welcome. We're going to rip it off. <laughs> Fine. You have no right That's to do it. Just send me a case. Yeah, yeah, send yeah, me yeah. a case, <laughs> then I'll sign off. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we, we, uh, I went and met them after, after hanging with this guy in the afternoon. And he had given us a new bottle of our, of our Apex Rosé. And it's us high-fiving whilst getting abducted by aliens. <laughs> right? Actually, yeah. Yeah. And on the back it says, pink wine for dudes and extraterrestrial beings. And then in very, very small font, aliens are real. We had an encounter. We know it to be true. <laughs> Speaking of, there's this great, you guys have a series. What is it? Dudes being dudes in wine country. Yeah. And yeah. The, be the best is the opening moment where you're like, you know what the best thing about doing your own TV show is? Buying a drone. Buying a drone. Gives you an excuse yeah, to yeah, buy yeah. a drone. You guys have That's too right. much fun. Too much fun. That's why Let's we do it. Let's take one more question. First of all, you're adorable. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and this is my Mother's Day present. So I'm very well, proud of you because I am a mom. And your mom must be very proud of you. So this was really an amazing interview for me. Don't what, make me sweat again. <laughs> Listen, just, when I've you started. Just, when, I've just stopped sweating. You started it and I started it. It was awful. I said, don't get oh, nervous because okay. now I'm going to get nervous. I want to know how many of the stunts you do yourself or do you want to do the stunts? I mean, where are you at with the stunts? Well, I do as many as I can. Um, because when it, when it came down to the pilot, I had one full month to rehearse the fight scenes for the pilot. Um, so that allowed me to ostensibly do almost everything in the pilot. Um, but that also set the, um, that set the tone photographically for the show because they were able to show me doing the stunts. So if they don't show me doing the stunts in episodes, it doesn't pack the same punch, no pun intended, as the pilot did. Um, so I try to do as many as I can. I do as many as I can. I do more than they would like. But it, it, we are a, um, we are a, uh, you know, employee of our schedule and how difficult it is. And the biggest thing when I'm doing a fight sequence is um, I need to be considerate of the stunt person that I'm working with, because if I zig when I'm supposed to zag, then I could really hurt somebody. Or if they zig when they're supposed to zag, I could break my nose for a fourth consecutive year. Oof. Um, which, again, season seven, that'll be number four. Uh, hopefully, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so so I, do as, I do as much as I can. But, but it, you know, logistically speaking, it's sometimes difficult to get up to speed on the fights. The one thing that they have been able to do is get me into a fight and be like, okay, here are these four moves. And I've, I've been doing this now for a long time, so I'm good at learning those four moves if I want. Thank you. This has been so much fun. Andrew, I'm going to have you uh, remind everybody where they can find out more about Knocking Point and sign up for the wine club. Uh, sure, knockingpointwines.com. That's knocking with no K. And people make that you know, mistake constantly. Mm -hmm. Knockingpointwines.com. Um, we don't have a lot of room for this next wine club shipment because Jason, you know, Jason's wine is going into it. I think we've got about 500 slots available. So, um, And lots of big things ahead, too. We've got Aisha in the fall. and You guys are, like I said, working hard, having a blast, whether you're on screen, whether you're in the vineyard, whether you're at the art meetings with your kids who you clearly adore, whether you're rapping in your car or on a stage in front of millions of viewers. Um, thank you so much just, for being here. And just one more thing before we're done. I want to go on the record as saying you mentioned Patty. Oh, Patty earlier. Murin, yeah. Patty Murin earlier. Uh -huh. She is making uh, our dreams come true tomorrow. I didn't know whether we were allowed to talk about it. We're going to go it. see Frozen on Broadway. My daughter is going to be dressed as Elsa. His daughter is going to be dressed Anna, as Anna. For sure. They're going to go... Uh, it's bad. They're going to come backstage so afterwards, and then I'm worried that both of them are going to have, like, a stroke or something <laughs> like that. We'll find out. Just document every second of it, because I, I can tell wait. you the Broadway, the Broadway fandom is going to go crazy, and I have can't a wait. feeling that the Arrow fandom and probably the Wine fandom will simultaneously freak out. Good. Fantastic. Thanks for thank sharing you, your afternoon you. with thank us, you gentlemen. Much. Appreciate it, guys. Right.